you know, Rand Paul was doing this right around that time. Uh, you know, President Obama had uh, dinner with a bunch of uh, GOP lawmakers, you know, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, uh, I think Bob Corker was there, a bunch of other people that I don't even know about. Uh, That's what I call an awesome Saturday night, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, the food sounded good. They were at a really nice hotel. Now, I just want to kind of comment briefly on this because it does And the White seem, House I picked mean, up a check, let's be clear. The yeah, President Obama picked up a check. $85 per person. Which is a very, which is very expensive when you're a bunch of Republican multimillionaires who've enriched yourself through your current office. So you better I mean, make it sure really the actually it was like a dinner where a bunch of guys were eating almost literally Fulmay May Young and talking about cutting uh, Medicaid. But I just want to say, I mean, is this concerning to you that this kind of conversation is restarting again? Uh, and do you see, is this the kind of path to, to more cuts? And then I guess coupled with that, we have new unemployment numbers that, uh, employment numbers that came out today. And, you know, it's looking pretty decent. I mean, the recovery is anemic, but we're certainly doing better than Europe, obviously. And that's due in no small part to the fact that we did at least have some stimulus. Right. So what's going on here? And, you know, what, what, what do you think in terms of the danger of these negotiations and the new employment numbers? Well, I'm just glad that we were proven yet again by these employment numbers how smart Republicans are when it comes to the economy. <laughs> All those job-killing tax, you know, raising taxes, kind of like in the 90s with Bill Clinton. See, Clinton, Obama, Bush... Which one's different than the other ones in terms of economic crashes? <laughs> I'll leave that to everyone to figure it out. Because uh, obviously all you need is to cut taxes on rich people and deregulate, and that leads to prosperity. Um, yeah, no, I mean, look, the new jobs numbers prove you're right. And, and had there been more stimulus, had President Obama fought for more, which we've gone through ad nauseum, there, we'd be in even better shape right now. But yes, we are going to recover. Our economies are cyclical. They can be affected. Certainly, you know, growth and prosperity as well as, as an economy shrinking can be, made, can be elongated and worsened as well as improved by what you do with fiscal and monetary policy. But, you know, the, the, to a certain degree, at least from my understanding of my economics classes, uh, obviously, you know, economics are cyclical and the economy will improve. I, um, I guess the, sequ the sequestration might hurt it to a certain degree, uh, but it'll... But but it'll improve as, as it's improving. Um, and when it comes to getting together with all these guys, you know, I, I feel like I did back in 2008 when I said, if you want to get together with these guys for the optics, kind of like George Bush standing up with all these Texas Democrats saying, look, I'm bipartisan, and then really not being bipartisan at all. Right. Um, you know, if he wants to do that, and frankly, if he wants to reach out with some guys, I don't believe that you shouldn't make, make deals. You should. You just, when you come from a position of strength, you come from a position of strength. You need to get more of what you want than what they get. Like the vast majority, and when you are the guy who just won a, a, an election overwhelmingly, uh, you need there need to be certain things that are off the table. And when you know that certain things are key platforms and planks of your party and have been for almost a hundred years now, uh, and those particular items are very important to people, not statistically, but individual people every day as to whether they eat and get the prescription drugs they need. Those things also need to be off the table because shared sacrifice isn't shared. When the difference is that it's going to cost you a little bit more money to run your, your own jet versus somebody else not being able to eat for two days, that's not shared sacrifice. Right. Uh, and that's my problem with all of this. It's not to say that there, can't be, there aren't deals to be made, and it's not to say that, that there aren't things that, w that can't be agreed upon. There can be. You know, which is why I said when President Obama agreed to having the top tax rates not go up above 250000 but 400000 I thought in the grand scheme of things that was a deal worth making if it gets you what you want. My problem is usually is that we don't get enough of what we want. Right. Um, so I, I'm not against dealing. I am, however, against taking uh, one cent out of Social Security and away from actual Medicare benefits. I have no problem with cutting Medicare costs if it's done right. For example, bulk negotiation of drugs. Yeah, let's do that. And cut the cost of Medicare for the government. That'd be just fine. Let's not take let's not take any anything away from from individuals. Hell, let's lower the Medicare age. It'll make the it'll make things more efficient. It'll make health care more efficient. It'll make Medicare more efficient. It works. It's a benefit to both programs. You're taking the people out who are the oldest away from our per, our private health care system, and you're adding people who are the youngest to the Medicare system. Win win. Absolutely. Um, and then you're, you're in the same thing with Social Security. Pretty simple. Eliminate the cap. Raise the cap on the payroll tax. Done. Right. I mean, I, there are simple fixes to these things. Now, again, if you want to cut the cut, cut the cost of some of these programs through smart programs like reimportation of drugs and bulk negotiation, I'm all for it. And again, if you want to deal with Republicans, you're willing to make deals on certain things like we are on tax rates here and there. I'm willing to do that too. 
But you, when you have the Senate and you just gained seats, when you just gained eight House seats, when you just won more votes overall among House members running, and when you just won an overwhelming presidential reelection, I'm sorry, but they're the ones that need to do most of the negotiating. That's how it works. Right. I mean, I, the only other thing that I, I saw this, I, I wish I had a better reference for it, but I literally just saw it for a moment, I think, on CNN or MSNBC or something. And when one of these uh, people, who a reporter who was covering it, said that uh, a Republican senator said to her that uh, he didn't know until this dinner uh, how many cuts uh, President Obama was offering or willing to make. So it also begs the question, just on top of bad policy, like, what the hell is going on there, just even in terms of basic information? <laughs> yeah, well, that's obviously a huge problem, and I just think, it's, it's, again, it's something to do with the quality of our elected leaders and representatives. 30 years ago, I mean, look, I can list Republicans, George Voinovich of Ohio and Dick Luger of Indiana, people like that, who I didn't agree with on a lot of issues, but nobody could argue they weren't engaged, smart, passionate about certain things they believed in. Chuck Hagel. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck Hagel, but there's right. new cr- and I disagree with him on a whole hell of a lot of things. But right. he cared about things, and he, and he was engaged. You know, Ted Cruz doesn't know his ass from his head. Right. You know, can I say that? I guess I just did. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> he, he's he's a he's a he's a low rent McCarthy. Right. You know, uh, and and I mean, so I I don't think these I think they don't know. They don't care to know. It's a different culture on the Republican Party. I just wrote a, a column on, on that this week about how, frankly, the, 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 or the unifying feature, no matter what your ideology is on the right these days, is anger. It's hating liberals and being angry, and it's, you know, it's not governing, because they used to have a set of policies they agreed, in, uh, they agreed upon that were market-based uh, you know, type programs um, that, that actually worked to solve problems, whether you agreed with them or not. Cap and trade, earned income tax credit, which Reagan was the first to support. Cap and trade was supported first by George Bush Sr. Um, you know, th- things like that. The individual mandate, whether you agree with it or not, was a policy, is a policy. You know, but they don't have those anymore. Tell me what their policies are besides cutting taxes and deregulating more, which is what got us into this mess to begin with. They don't have any policies. It's, it's rejecting liberals and mocking liberals and hating liberals, whatever that means. That's their current set of unifying features. Whether you're McCain sitting up and telling the mother of an Aurora victim that you just need some straight talk, uh, yeah. or you're, you're, you're uh, Rand Paul lashing out at Hillary Clinton, or you're Ron Johnson being the complete moron that he is, uh, and we can go on and on from Gomer to Bachman to the whole rest of the, the, that rogues gallery of people that should never be anywhere near our representative body in a democracy. Of course they're ill I mean, they, they don't know anything. Louis Gomer like... thinks if you've got guns in schools, that's going to make people safer, where every statistic will tell you not. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He's, you know, Justice Scalia doesn't know what the hell he's doing either. He's, just, he's of the same mold. Racial entitlements, right, uh, for voting. So I think these are, these are all important, important items that... You, that that one needs to be aware of that these guys, by design, uh, are not educated on the issues because they don't want to be, right? And, and, and they also listen to Mitch McConnell, who, as you know, it's good to see him filibustering, as John Stewart pointed out, on drones because he wasn't there to enable everything President Mitch Bush Mitch McConnell did. is a great humanitarian. <laughs> yes. He's one of the kindest snapping turtles you'll ever meet. He is like, I mean, Mitch McConnell... You know, when I, whatever else you think about him, I think his profound concern for human rights in South Asia is pretty unimpeachable. <laughs> that's, I, I think that you're exactly right about that, and that's something that I think is important. So, is that no, don't let the don't let the the, the grandmotherly look uh, with the glasses fool you. He's a kind and gentle man. <laughs> right. He's yeah. He's a real sweetheart.